the new AMD processors came out a few days ago and are the cheapest way that you can build a gaming PC. Simple as that. The 2200G and 2400G are a similar speed and price to the Ryzen 1200 and 1400 from last year, only they also have Vega graphics built in. This is the fastest onboard graphics the world has ever seen. It can run Counter-Strike at hundreds of frames a second. Most modern, well-optimised titles will run at 60fps while still looking good, and it's only the poorly optimised games like PUBG and Deus Ex where you'll have to settle for 30. Not bad for onboard graphics. Don't expect these to compete with, say, the GeForce 1050 or Radeon 560 for gaming, but do expect them to render anything below that level of performance obsolete. Oh, and it's worth mentioning that they're both overclockable, which is an awesome feature even if I'm not covering it much in this video. Even if you don't need a new budget PC, you should still understand the significance of these products. I can think of many people I know who would benefit from them. They're for anybody out there wanting to get into PC gaming cheaply for the first time, or perhaps for those who want to build a budget second PC for whatever reason. That's a brief summary of these new APUs. That stands for Accelerated Processing Unit, by the way. But what it is is effectively a processor and graphics card rolled into one. The cheaper of the two is the 2200G. It's $100 and comes with 4 cores and decent gaming performance. The 2400G comes with 4 extra threads, a bit more gaming performance, and sells for $170. I don't think this is justified for the improved gaming experience alone, but the more powerful processor will definitely make it better for video editing and the like. Let's talk graphics, since this is the big story here. You may know Vega from the high-end graphics cards released last year, but AMD have made a tiny, really efficient version to go into these APUs as well. But they're still Vega. While the big powerful ones have 56 and 64 compute units, these APUs have just 8 and 11. So that's how you can expect their performance to fare. Onboard graphics isn't a new idea. Processors from both AMD and Intel have had them for years. And although AMD usually has faster, neither has been that impressive until now. It's taken way too long, but with these new APUs it's finally reached a stage where they're acceptable for modern gaming. I strongly suggest checking out the reviews I've linked to in this video's description. This video will only briefly skim the games and performance you can expect. If you game at 4K or on ultra settings, then these APUs won't be very good, but lower the resolution and settings and they'll be fine, and CSGO on highest settings at 1080p runs at 138fps on the 2200G and 168 on the 2400G, which will go up to over 200 if you lower the settings. I liked Hardware Unboxed's review the most. He didn't just show a lot of games, but he also tested different computer configurations. Of particular importance was the computer's RAM. Normal graphics cards have their own super fast RAM built into them, so it doesn't normally matter. But these APUs use your computer's standard memory, and as a result, the performance you can expect is heavily tied to the RAMs. It could be the difference between 83 and 191 FPS in CSGO. That's a crazy difference. You'll want two sticks, preferably at 3200MHz, to get the most out of these APUs. Sadly, now is not a good time for buying RAM. Prices have gone through the roof. This has happened before, I remember it in 2013, and another spike in 2010. But that doesn't make it any better this time, and right now it feels like it's never going to drop again. Which is sad because you could end up spending more on RAM than you do on the graphics card and processor combined with one of these APUs. The idea of which makes me sick. Regardless, because graphics cards are also extortionately priced right now, I still feel these APUs are a desirable option. Honestly, they're the only choice for gamers on a budget right now. I suspect a lot of people will buy one of these, hoping to buy a more powerful graphics card to slot into the system at a later date once the prices, hopefully, return to normal again. The design of the Ryzen processor bit of these chips is particularly interesting. Ryzen is made up of core clusters, also known as CCXs. These each have four cores inside. Strap two together and you get the high-end eight core Ryzens from last year. You can strap even more together and get even more performance, which is exactly what AMD did with the Threadripper and their Epic server chips. The benefit of this approach is that it's cheap. Last year's Ryzens were all made up of two CCXs but with different amounts of cores enabled for both. An 8-core Ryzen would have all four from each side enabled, a 6-core would have three from each side, and a 4-core would have two from each side. Some buyers got lucky and got 8 cores enabled on their 4 or 6-core processors, but when you have fewer than 8 active cores, it helps to have the active ones spread across these two sections, since there's more area for the heat to dissipate from, 
which keeps it cooler and makes it better for overclocking than if, say, four from one side are active and none from the other. The downside of spreading them out like this is that it takes extra time for information to travel between the two CCXs. This is one downside of Ryzen processors that Intel ones don't suffer from. But this is where the new APUs are different. They only have one core cluster with all four cores enabled on it. Where the other core cluster used to be has instead been replaced with the Vega graphics I covered earlier. Having just one core cluster, it means it doesn't take quite so long for information to travel about the processor, but does mean that overclocking and temperatures will be worse. In practice, this doesn't seem to matter too much. And thanks to numerous optimizations in these new designs, they're on average about 10% faster than the same processors from last year. AMD's processors go like this. Zen, released last year, Zen Plus, to be released in a few months' time, and Zen 2, which will probably come sometime next year. These APUs are a weird hybrid. They're based on 14 nanometers, the same as the original Zen, but have some of the optimizations that will be found in the smaller 12 nanometer Zen Pluses. This is why they're not the same as Ryzen's from last year, in case you're wondering. If you find this stuff as interesting as I do, then your imagination is probably running wild right now at the future possibilities with this technology. Stuff like, could they make an even more powerful version? Perhaps by having a 6 or 8 core processor and even more Vega cores? Yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? But like I covered already, with only space for one core cluster, Ryzen is currently limited to just four cores. I guess they could make a physically larger version, but that would cost more and at that point you might as well just get a separate processor and graphics card anyway. I think the strength of these APUs is their low cost, so I don't think it's realistic to expect expensive versions. As I said, Zen Plus will move to 12 nanometers, which makes stuff smaller, which would let them fit more stuff in the same space, so I don't see why we couldn't see more powerful Vega graphics in the future at some point. And while there's only speculation about Zen 2 right now, if it moved to 6 cores per core cluster, then that would be one way of having 6 core versions of these APUs next year. But right now, perhaps a better question to ask would be, when can we expect to see these in laptops? I mean, that's surely got to be the main selling point of an APU like this, hasn't it? I'm not talking mid-range here, I'm talking budget. The sort of price point that, until now, has only had the power for spreadsheets and internet browsing and memes. For as long as I can remember, if you got a cheap laptop, then you could say goodbye to the possibility of gaming with it. These APUs have the potential to be a game changer, an enabler. And rumor has it that low power 2200 and 400 GE versions are coming. I've only heard about these being used for mini desktop systems so far. But come on, that's also got to cover laptops, hasn't it? It just has to. At 35 watts, these are comparable to existing mobile processors. It can be a thing. My main concern is that, even if these do come to laptops, that they'll be hampered by a premium price. Did you know there are already Ryzen Vega APUs out there, the 2500 and 2700U, which were released late last year? These are slower 15 watt designs that have already found their way into laptops. But sadly, these have been sold at a premium price that puts them in direct competition with laptops boasting dedicated graphics cards like the GeForce 1050 series, which are far more powerful. If you're looking for gaming performance, then for the same price, it makes no sense to get the APU. In conclusion, both the 2200G and 2400G look like awesome APUs that really do open up many exciting possibilities. And while it's easier to get excited about the 2400G for its cutting edge onboard graphics, I think it's the 2200G that's the real success story here, thanks to its aggressive sub $100 price point. And that's the key thing, not just their acceptable performance, but the aggressively low price point that they sell for. They're going to find their way into many home-built systems, but I also hope they make their way into affordable gaming laptops, as this will lower the barrier of entry for all.